Hello, and thank you so much for joining us in worship today with Good Shepherd Lutheran Church out of Bismarck. Wherever you are, whether it's a TV screen, computer screen, phone, laptop, whatever you got, we're just happy to be worshiping our Lord with you. I am Deacon Ashley Greenwood. I serve as the Deacon of Children, Youth, and Family Ministries here at Good Shepherd, and our pastor, Julie Anderson, will be sharing the sermon with you today. So, get cozy, get ready, and let us worship together. beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Oh, 
highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God and heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. For Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy. guardian of your people, you are always ready to hear our cries. Teach us to rely day and night on your care. Inspire us to seek your enduring justice for all of the suffering world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages. Today we are going to be reading scripture. We will be starting in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 1. And it simply says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. He was in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and God was with the word in the beginning. What? what? Ooh. Boom. John 1. What? I almost like that a little bit better than I liked actually reading it's so it much out fun of the Bible. Because in the beginning was the word and the word was with, wait, no. In the beginning was, it's something like yes. that. Yes. In it's, the beginning was the word and, and the, the word was with God, God and, and God was in. And the word was God. Boom. <laughs> it's beautiful scripture. And if you can really get the words right, which are a little kooky. Yes. Boom, boom, boom. It feels so nice. You can do anything with scripture. It's you can not do just so reading it out of the Bible. Do you know you how many songs? So many things with scripture. How many songs they've made with scripture? Do you know yes. that there's cartoons that they oh, put together yeah. telling stories from the Bible? You can find like lessons out of the oh. Bible through scripture. Oh, yes. You can find like um, mm -hmm. like rules, like how God wants us to treat other mm -hmm. people, how to treat other people mm -hmm. through the Bible. With scripture, scripture is just fantastic. It teaches us so much yeah. of, of God. And it just is something we can use in all of our lives. Yep. And we can learn in so many different ways. We can learn it through weird raps mm -hmm. or through songs. Or we can find our own fancy schmancy mm -hmm. Bibles. Mm -hmm. um, we are super excited super. because um, our third graders this week, so Wednesday and Sunday, will be receiving their Bibles. And Woo! we're so happy that Congratulations! we get to put Bibles in their hands and they get to go through the Bible and find scripture and find verses that they might like and work through their Bible. And they get to make it their own. Yes. So sometimes when I was growing up, I used my parents' Bible for stuff, my yeah. other brothers or sisters. And then when I got my own Bible, mm -hmm. I got to write in there and leave notes in there yes. and put stickers in there, which yes. guess what? There are stickers in the back of this Bible that you will all be receiving, you third graders. And there's colors. Oh, and there's questions, and there's so many fun things, and it is easy to understand. It's such a great Bible. Mm -hmm. This is the Spark NRSV Bible given to our third graders. Yep. And on top of that, once you receive your Bible and we you come back to church school, you get Bible tabs so that it's a little bit easier when we start working through our Bible, and you get colored pencils Yay. so that you make your Bible 
your very own. own. Yes. yes. So we're super excited. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, because God yes. was in the word. Yes. Boom. I love we're it. We're so excited to share our Bibles, and we are so excited for your journey with the Bible, however you may find it. Yes. So congratulations to all the third graders. I can't wait to see all of those brand new beautiful Bibles in worship and in church school. Yes. Um, so because we're celebrating, can you pray us Let's out pray. Today? Repeat after me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you. Thank you. For your word. For your word. For the Bible. For the Bible. And for everything. And for everything. And all God's children said. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here. Congratulations, third graders. Have a fabulous week. Yay. Bye. Bye. The first reading is from Jeremiah, chapter 31, starting with the 27th verse. The days are surely coming, says the Lord when I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of humans and the seed of animals. And just as I have watched over them to pluck up and break down, to overflow, destroy, and bring evil, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, says the Lord. In those days they shall no longer say, the parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. But all shall die for their own sins, the teeth of everyone who eats sour grapes shall be set on edge. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, for the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 119. Oh, how I love your teaching. All the day long it is on my mind. Your commandment has made me wiser than my enemies, for it is always with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your decrees are my study. I am wiser than the elders, because I observe your commandments. I restrain my feet from every evil way, that I may keep your word. I do not turn aside from your judgments, because you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste. They are sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your commandments, I gain understanding. Therefore, I hate every lying way. The second reading is from 2 Timothy, chapter 3, starting at verse 14, continuing into chapter 4 to verse 5. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believe, knowing from whom you learned it, and how, from childhood, you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is youthful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. So that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped in every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim this message. Be persistent, whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to the myths. As for you, Always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
gospel this week comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, the 18th chapter. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while, he refused. But later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, from our Heavenly Father and from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, folks, it is the season. The signs are all around us. It's the political season. Now, before you say, tune out, tune out, that the church and politics don't blend, hear me out. Politics means kind of the study of power, the structure of power. And every relationship we have has a power gradient. In some, the power gradient is very equal. In others, one person is more powerful than the other. And that's what we need to keep in mind. Now, we talk about there's a separation of church and state, church and state, yes. Separation, not amputation. Separation means that the government does not require us to be part of a particular religion. We are given freedom of that religion. And those, that religion, that understanding of power is something we bring to our world. Now, we talk about the kingdom of the right hand and the kingdom of the left hand. Now, Jesus is at the right hand of God, so this, this right hand represents God's kingdom. The left hand represents our world, and both of these need to come together. We'll get to that in a moment. But you might ask, why am I talking about politics? Well, our reading today, our parable, tells us that Jesus is teaching about prayer and how it is we are to communicate. And prayer, we are heard, we are told, and we, we've seen, is very powerful. So we need to use prayer wisely. And in this parable, Jesus tells about a widow, and a judge. Now in this time, the widow would be seen as someone who's at the very bottom of the power structure. She has very little power to do much of anything. Only even, even her voice would be ignored. The judge on the other hand has a lot of power to do things and to make stuff happen. But that judge, we find out, is using that power of his for his own good, not for the good of everyone. So when this widow, so the, as Jesus tells this story, this widow comes and is persistently bringing forth an issue of justice. Now, we don't know what it is. Maybe someone in her family is denying her an inheritance, uh, denying her something that she is entitled as a widow, the one little power that she has. We also need to keep in mind that the nation of Israel and all the nations were not judged based on their GDP, the size of their army and such. 
but on how they took care of the widow, the orphan, and the stranger among them. So keeping that in mind, as Jesus tells this story and this widow in her persistent demand for justice, and it just gets to the point where this powerful judge is worn down. And we're told from the very beginning that this judge doesn't even respect God, he doesn't respect other people, which to me says he's in it for his own use. But she keeps the persistently coming to him and he finally has to say, you know what? She's literally giving me a black eye here in the community, in, you know, she is just pounding on me with her demand for justice. And the judge finally says, that's it, I give up. I'm gonna give her her justice and for no other reason than to get rid of her. Now the beauty of parables is that we are invited into the story. Now if in this parable you see yourself as the widow, are you really using your power, what little power you have to make things better for other people, to demand that stuff become just? I would hope we have that opportunity, but I think in this story, the widow is God. The widow is the one who is persistently pursuing that justice and reminding us of what creates balance. For justice is making things right, creating balance. I believe Jesus would, this would be the thing when people would walk home and go, wait a minute, I'm the judge. I'm not respecting God, I'm not respecting other people, I'm in it for myself, the very definition of sin. And that is where we find prayer, folks. If we think about that, if that widow is the right hand and the judge is the left hand, when they finally come together, when they finally see and have heard each other, especially when the widow has been heard, does justice happen? And God is like that in our life. He, you know, we, we can try to resist as much as we possibly can and say, no God, it's my power, I'm gonna take care of it, but God needs our power too, to be his hands, his voice here on earth. And that persistence pays off and you know it's we've a lot of stuff has happened in the last couple of years and and a lot of voices have been brought forward about injustices in our world and I know myself much often my first reaction is well that doesn't affect me but then if I hear the story of the person I can probably identify with them that they have been suppressed, that they are not given justice. I'm a little bit of a history buff, so let me just give you an example. Um, you know, recently we celebrated the centennial of women being able to vote here in this country. And I just love how it's, well, women were given the vote. No, women were not given the vote. They were like that widow. They had to be persistent and constantly bringing up over and over again their reason, their, the, the need for women to have a voice in government. I mean, we can even say it goes back to 1776 when Abigail Adams reminded her husband, remember the ladies when they were talking about the Declaration of Independence. And you know, when you hear that, oh, they were given the vote, it sounds so benevolent. But when you really look at the story, you see that they were persistent like the widow. They needed to make sure that everyone heard them. Well, this might sound all confusing and, and, and you know, how do I do this? Let's get back to prayer. 
pray consistently, ask for God's guidance. What does prayer do to us? Prayer often changes us. We think we might be trying to change God, like the unjust judge, but more often than not, prayer changes us by bringing together God's kingdom with our world. I was reminded recently that when you bring your hands together, if you are you know, troubled, if both sides of your brain are trying to kind of debate and fight with each other, when you bring your hands together, those two sides can now communicate. So when we pray for ourselves, it's good to pray like this, because that way both sides, we can hear both voices, God's voice and the voice of this world, the needs of this world. When we're together in community, why not join hands with one another? That way we are strengthened as a community of faith to see that there are others who are going for that same justice. It's an opportunity to balance power. And you may think, I'm just this little person. My, my voice has nothing that can, can change the world. Well, I'm reminded of a story that uh, a uh, professor in college taught, taught me. He ended up having, he, he actually student taught at the school where my grandmother was the cook. And he said, you know, I've learned the secret to being a teacher. Is there's three people you need to, to really get in good with at the school. That would be the cook, the secretary, and the janitor. Not the principal, not the superintendent, but those three people. They're the ones that stick around for a long time. They're persistent. They know how things get done. They are the underlying power and foundation of any school. And it is through them that a lot of people change and find, discover all sorts of things. So let us be reminded that our prayers our prayer will, will be heard by God. But more importantly, that allows God to change us, to help us to hear, so that we may better understand ourselves, this world, and what God would have us do. Tell your story. Listen to other people's stories. And you will find that God is very active in this world and we have that opportunity to bring God's kingdom into this world through prayer and our actions and our calls for justice. As we gather today, when we pray, let us pray as God taught us. Amen. Christ. Uh
Now let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. For all the baptized, that they become skilled in compassion and grace and equipped to share the good news with all. Grant your followers persistence in proclamation and prayer. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. For air and sky, clouds and sun, that they provide rain to parched land and relief to flooded ground. Renew and restore our polluted atmosphere and empower us to be worthy stewards of creation. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. For judges, juries, and all who work in the judicial system, that they desire wisdom, seek truth, rule with fairness, and have the courage to do what is right. Eliminate oppression and injustice in our criminal just justice system. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. For all who are lonely, especially those who have newly arrived in an unfamiliar city or country, political prisoners without resource to justice, hospital patients without visitors, and any who are ill or grief-stricken. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. For those in our congregation and community engaged in advocacy work, that with the persistence of the widow, they lift their voices in seeking justice on behalf of others. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. For those who have taught us faith and now rest in your heavenly peace, that we remember and give thanks for these saints who shared the gospel through word and deed. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O oh God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. Please take a moment to share the peace with those near you and know that we are sharing our peace with you wherever you are. Peace be with you. As always, we have many, many activities and things happening here at Good Shepherd. We celebrate this week our Bible journaling class that happens once a month and our new members class that happens every other month. Um, we also want to share with you a few invitations. We will begin cantata rehearsals on November 1st. So if you'd like to sing in our choir, if you'd like to join us to rehearse and learn the cantata, that will be starting November 1st. Uh, so keep that in mind. And also, as we pray for all of those who have been affected by Hurricane Ian, we encourage you to uh, visit the Lutheran Disaster Relief website. Uh, it is an incredible organization that does some great, great work in areas that have been affected by disasters. And the funds that go to Lutheran Disaster Relief go directly to those in need. So as we pray for all of those and all of the things that will have to be done to fix and take care of people after the hurricane, we give many of our prayers and uh, trust in Lutheran Disaster Relief to help that they can find ways to accommodate and uh, help those in need. Thanks.
We accept our offering and give thanks for all that we are and all that we give. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ who sets a table for us. Amen. As we prepare to share in thanksgiving in one of those blessings, I invite you to grab a piece of bread or cracker, some juice or wine if you have available and let us partake of this meal of blessing. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right to give thank our thanks and praise. We are reminded that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink from, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom as you teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The banquet is set. Let us partake. I invite you to take your bread, take and eat the body of Christ given for you. As you take your wine or juice, take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you.
abundant table. You have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Go in peace with Christ beside you. Thanks be to God.
We can't thank you enough for joining us during worship today. We hope that it was a holy and special time that we were able to celebrate our God together. As always, we hope that you're able to find a congregation near you to worship in person or wherever feels safe. We are Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Bismarck, a church of the ELCA, and we hope you have a great week and feel God in everything that you do. Amen. Bye. Okay. 